Hunter must hunt. Hot damn, I barely commit to relationships for 13 months.
right. How we look in. Uh, I think we look okay. I think we look okay. Fingalui, Muguanaf, Klulu, Rilje, Gognagel, Fatten. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Who are my... We, we, at a... At a... At a... Yes, very early time. Uh, who are my EU friends in chat? Any EU friends in chat? Friend, EU friends who are rejoicing at the earlier time. Fantastic. That's great. This is by no means, uh, unfortunately, we're not moving the time. I, I, like, uh, but uh, today I'm trying to work around a work meeting that I have during my regular stream time. Uh, and I still wanted to stream today. So um, I decided to just go live a little bit early. We might be doing... I have a night assessment next week, so my circadian rhythm is going to be basically completely flipped. If I feel up to it, we might be doing very early morning streams. At least early morning for the USA would be like afternoon for EU. We might. Um, I don't know yet because, again, uh, next week is going to kind of be hell. Flipping your circadian rhythm is not a uh, an easy thing to do. So, uh, I essentially have to be a vampire for a week. Uh, but we'll see how I'm feeling. And if I'm feeling okay after my work is done, then we'll do, uh, we'll do a very early morning stream before I go to bed. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, how I'm feeling. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What is the point of a night engagement? Is it physical? No, it is a internal network pen test like any other. It's just the client doesn't want me disrupting their operations during business hours. It doesn't seem like a client that knows a whole lot about penetration testing. So they're confirmed they're they're concerned that I'm gonna do things to disrupt their business operations, which could not be further from the truth. Um, would love the early streams. I, I uh, we'll see if I bring if I can bring those to you. If I can, if I have if I have the energy level, I will certainly do that. Let me get water really quickly. Okay, there we go. There we go. Rip, well, I hope it goes well regardless. I, I mean, it's just a normal pen test other than the fact that I have to be uh, I have to be a vampire to do it. That's all. Um, that kind of sucks. Um, but, hey, whatever. Do you at least get more money? No, I get paid per hour. I get paid uh, salary. Um, so I'm not being paid per engagement. I... Uh, I, I I'm getting, technically, I'm getting paid right now. Uh, but I just, I have flexible work hours. Uh, I hope it goes well regardless. It should be a pretty easy one. I did some recon on the target already. They don't seem terribly robust. Um, I think I'll have a pretty easy time with it. So, uh, which is good. Uh, loved your streams. Newbie Tuesday literally increased my brain size. Thank you. But you don't want to increase your brain size because, see, your brain can't get much the most of your organs can grow and shrink uh, like pretty much as needed um but your brain is actually encased in a, a bony container that we call your skull so your brain actually has like numerous mechanisms in place to prevent exactly that from happening to keep it from expanding but you do want to add more wrinkles to your brain we're trying to add more wrinkles the wrinkles of your brain are sort of a trick to increase the amount of neurons that it can squeeze into a small space. If you're talking about things you want to increase the size of, then your penise. Your penis for sure, absolutely. Your pen testing efficiency and necessary, necessary investigation score. 
Maticus Maximus with 13 months. My goodness. 13 months. I barely commit to relationships for 13 months. Hey, same. <laughs> Unnamed comment. A comment with the 12 months of Prime. Welcome back, my friend. Teddington, thanks so much for the 69 Tiggle biddies. I, Daniil, thank you for the follow. It's all about that surface area. It is. It is all about that surface area. Oh, you know what I hate, chat? You, you, you know, it, like I cleaned out my fridge last night. This is something I've been dreading for a long time because, you know, every time you clean out the fridge, there's always that sour cream container that's been in there for somewhat longer than it should have been. And uh, and you pull you 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 dig it out of the bat the vi it's always in the very back of the fridge you didn't even know it was there like the fridge just produces them, just produces them, and you pull it out of there, and you know you shouldn't look you know you shouldn't, and you you know you should probably just donate it to the Smithsonian for the uh to study the new life forms that are d undoubtedly growing in there, um. But you always have to, right? You can never just throw it away without looking. You have to at least take a look and know exactly how gross it is. And then it haunts you. And then it just sticks with you. Every time I walk past the fridge, and I'm like, it's it's uh, it's haunting me. You should prop stop blaming the fridge. I'm not blaming the fridge, just a guy. Did it smell good? I didn't smell. I did not smell. I just took a quick peek and then tossed it out. Damn, I think I got one right now I was supposed to throw out. Again, the fridge I think the fridge just produces them. Did you taste it? No. What what? Why would you why? 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 Why would you why would you why would you even even say that? No. No. Absolutely no. 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 Mm -mm, no no no. Only taste when there's a buffer slice. We, we've been over the buffer slice, okay? You ate mold. I did not eat moldy bread. This is fake news. Buffer slice. And with bread specifically, the little, the, um, I can't remember what they're called, but the, but the, the reason that you're not supposed to eat moldy bread, um, is that, is that, um, even even if even if the bread you're particularly eating is the eating at the moment is not moldy is because the 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 mold has like roots that spread out like way further than the mold itself on the surface looks like uh, so you're tech you're eating mold regardless but on sliced bread it can't move between the slices so a buffer slice is safe i maintain I talked to head of security today because I need Mac inside. Of, I need a Mac inside an internal company network for iOS development. He told me it won't be possible because they cannot find any proper AV for it. Uh, well, Macs don't get viruses. Just tell him Macs don't get viruses. As a cybersecurity advanced beginner, okay, okay. I don't really know what I should say anymore at this point. Windows clients have McAfee as AV. Okay, well, first of all, again, Macs don't get viruses. Second of all, Macintosh has development environments available. You can, you, uh, I don't, I, 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 like Windows produces free wi ISOs of Windows 11, um, and Windows 10 and window and Windows server for you to test on. Like, like you can, they expire only like, uh, a month after you download them, I think, but they're, they're VMs meant to facilitate development. I'm sure Apple has a similar thing down, like down, uh, figure out what Apple has to offer you for iOS development. I'm quite sure that Apple has a solution for iOS development on other platforms. Have you ever participated in hacking esports? I'm pretending to be a new viewer today. I did commentate hacking esports once, um, uh, but I have never participated in it. I have never competed, that is to say. Mold is airborne, though. If you can see it, isn't it too late for the loaf? I mean, you could argue that. That is indeed what Helen of Tor argued. Um, but I've always been fine with the buffer slice, uh, rule. Does anyone know what kind of antivirus Google has? Uh, I don't know anything about Google's antivirus. I've never run into it. But there's lots of antiviruses I haven't particularly run into. Uh, I tend to test more robust environments. So I tend to not run into antivirus. I tend to run into, uh, endpoint protection. Uh, which is, like, super antivirus. 
So I'm more familiar with endpoint protection than I am the various kinds of antivirus. Um, the antivirus out there is almost all signature based. Um, and it's not too hard to bypass with a little bit of doing. Uh, all right, let's look at let's look at hack the box. We're just doing some hack the box and chill today. Just a real chill, um, chill brain wrinkles. Okay, chill brain wrinkles today. Wouldn't that be the most secure network? Be a network of Macs, they can't get viruses. Um, that does seem to be the logic. Yes, that does seem to be the logic. Except you run into a problem of how do you administer those Macs without Active Directory. Um, and if that system that you choose is compromised, then you, you do indeed have a problem. No insane box today? Well, we never really do. We've actually done a few insane boxes on stream. But not today, no. Not today. I do have a hard stop at some point in the future. So I can't... Ideally, the box won't take me all, all day to do. Let's take a look-see. All right, so these are the retired boxes. Again, if you want me to do a box, it must be retired. Um, what? But I'll, I'll give a minute for chat. Chat, if you have recommendations of boxes you'd like to see, uh, let me know. And I will. Uh, we will add them to the poll. I'll give you a minute. Uh, while I start up my VM, because I forgot to do that before the stream, like I usually do. Ketby with the Prime. First time Prime indoctrination into the I cult. Welcome to the All Eyes Red Team, my friend. Thanks, supporting, thanks for supporting the stream. Brain Spiller with the first time indoctrination into the cult. Thank you so much, Brain Spiller. It's good to have you, my friend. A hunter must hunt. Can we do some Windows box? Absolutely. Absolutely. Back door? Is that... Is that... Yep. Right here. Uh, so we can add backdoor. Altered was good. Altered. Uh, yep, we'll throw altered in. Altered, backdoor. And someone wanted a Windows box. Can we do an easy box? Ideally a WordPress box. Well, I don't think they're marked for as far as WordPress. But uh, I'll throw some Windows boxes in here. We can put driver in. We'll put return in. A so we've got hunt. Uh, Blackfield was requested. Have we done Blackfield? We have done Blackfield. But I'll put it in. I believe that one was Active Directory, if I remember correctly. So I will put that one in. Altered. Uh, what else was requested? Um, backdoor? Uh, and then there was return, which is Windows and driver. Hey, listen! I can't see chat at the moment. I'm typing a poll. I'll check in a second. If it's something I absolutely need to know now, uh, send it to me in a Discord message. All right, there we go. What's the difference between today and Tuesday? Are Tuesdays just slower and Thursday full speed? Um, we tend to do di more difficult boxes on Thursdays. Um, and yeah, I tend to not explain things quite as much. At least I'm not as painstaking about going through every little thing that I, ta that I do. Um, but you're still obviously willing to ask questions. And if you'd like me to explain something, you absolutely can. It's mo the, the, the biggest difference is that uh, I just do more difficult boxes. We try to we try to do a little bit more advanced, but if you're a newbie, you're still going to get stuff out of it, I promise. Uh, the point is not to understand literally everything. The point is to go to bed tonight knowing a little bit more than you did yesterday. That's the idea. Need a star cam? She doesn't stay in. I, I thought about that. My brother has a... Uh, my brother on his stream has a dog cam. Uh, for his dog, but Star doesn't stay in the same place for long enough. Like she wanders around all the time. She want she just wanders around constantly. So uh, like she's very active. 
Hi, honey. She's staring at me from around the... You can't see her. She's off camera, but she's staring at me from the hallway outside around the corner. Hi, honey. Come here. Come here, sweetie. What are you just staring at me for, you creep? Come on. Okay. Well, if she comes in, I'll... I'll if she comes in, I'll lift her up. Wireless head cam? That's actually not a... Uh, you'd be able to see my whole apartment as she wanders around it. And she tends to nap while I stream. So, you probably just get a still image of, like, the wall or something. Uh, Mind Asteris with the two-month prime indoctrination into the cult. Welcome back to the All Has Red Team, my friend. Wally W4, thank you so much for the first time indoctrination. It's good to have you on the team. Uh, all right, we're doing Blackfield, uh, which, if I remember correctly, is a Windows Active Directory machine. So let's see what we can get up to. Blackfield. All righty. I'll move it over here and I'll start it up off stream on the uh, lab. Oh, look, always learn so much. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that, my friend. I do it purely to teach people. I just enjoy teaching. All right, we are deploying the box. And I said I was going to start up my VM, and then didn't actually do it. So let's go ahead and do that. No tie for once? Yeah, it's unusual. You can see that some people were trying to set up the tie, but it didn't work out. All right, we're booting up the VM. Let's go to this view. Blackfield. Now, I have done this box before, but I do not remember it. And just because I've done a box before doesn't mean you guys aren't going to get some va get value out of it. Um, you guys do love the Active Directory stuff, and there does tend to be less Active Directory uh, machines. So uh, I inevitably end up redoing them after a certain amount of time, usually. Uh, let's get my notes going. I do not have notes for Blackfield, interestingly. I wonder how long ago I did it. Maybe I didn't do this one on stream. I don't remember. Maybe I did this one early uh, before I started streaming. Had another pen tester interview today, and I crushed it. Struggling to get more hands-on exercise before the technical part. That's great, my dude. I'm super glad to hear that. She just brushed against my leg. Where did she go? Star. Oh, there you are. Hi, honey. Come on. She, she rubbed against my legs, and then she just ran away. I don't know what her deal is today. All right. Got the console open. Let's start the... Let's start the VPN. We're going to connect to Hack the Box's VPN. Do you do your assessments on your personal VM? Oh no, I have a work, I have an entire work laptop for doing my assessments on. Uh, my assessments in real life are, are split between three different platforms actually. I do, I use um, the, 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 the base OS is Windows, uh, a Commando Windows install. Commando, if you don't know, is like uh, it's FireEye's attempt, or it's Mandiant's attempt to make a uh, to make a Windows-based uh, penetration testing uh, installation. Um, so Commando is installed, uh, which is essentially Windows 10 with a bunch of tools installed. Um, and on top of that, I've got VirtualBox running a uh, a Kali VM, and I also have I use several I use Docker and Windows subsystem for Linux quite a bit. Okay, so we're waiting for Blackfield to spin up. If it is indeed an Active Directory machine, which I think it is, if I remember correctly. It will take a minute to spin up. Domain controllers usually take a little bit longer to spin up. 
10, 10, 10, 192. Let's see if we can ping it. There we go. So we can ping it. So what do we notice? Uh, we notice the time to live is 127. This is what you'll typically... This is uh, this or... A time to live in the 120s is typically what you'll see for Windows machines. Uh, so this is a this is definitely a Windows machine. And we'll go ahead and scan it because I see I have questions, but I'll get to those here in a second. Let me just go ahead and... Uh, actually, let me make a directory. Blackfield. Okay. And we will nmap tac sc for default scripts, tac sv for enumerate versions, on for output and nmap format. We'll make it verbose mode. And 10, 10, and the IP address is 10, 10, 10, 1, 9, 2. Okay. Uh, did you get your laptop already configured or did you configure it yourself? No, they just sent me the laptop and said you can put whatever you want on it. Uh, most of my colleagues just install Kali on bare metal on this laptop. I didn't want to do that. I don't really like installing Kali on bare metal. Uh, so I decided to do Commando. And it's been working out pretty well. Uh, I, I had never tried out Commando before. Uh, host seems down. Uh, let's just do... Let's just do TAC PN. We know it's up. My guess is it's the the ping is failing. It is finding ports open, so we can reach the box. Uh, I did configure it myself. Yes. Uh, I, again, I have I have complete freedom as far as what platform I want to operate from, as long as it's from my work laptop, which is off screen. You can't see it. It's underneath the camera, right to the left of me. What do you think of the main difference between hack the box and try hack me? Uh, well. Ostensibly, they're quite similar. They're just penetration testing challenges. I would say Try Hack Me tends to give you, um, tends to give you more direction. Um, some Try Hack Me machines have like lore, or uh, or they're just full CTF machines just for fun. Um, Hack the Box tends to be more of a serious pen testing platform. Um, Hack the Box is tend uh, on average more difficult. Uh, that's the general agreement. Um, then I like the hardest, I would say the hardest try hack me boxes, uh, insane level rise to about the level of a hack the box hard. So I would say hack the box is a shade harder on average, uh, hack the box, try hack me machines also tend to be more realistic in my experience. Hack the box has like the box creator had an idea of like a cool exploitation path, uh, utilizing some specific software that perhaps they use. Maybe they're a dev or something like that. Um, and the whole box we based around that theme, like bucket, for example, was AWS. It was all Amazon web services themed. Um, there was, uh, there was a Kubernetes one. I can't remember what it's called. Um, hack the box boxes tend to have themes, um, which is not super realistic, but it helps you learn from new technologies. Try hack me machines tend to be a little bit more realistic, but also a little easier. Uh, they're both great platforms. Uh, we do see blackfield.local. This local zero is kind of a misnomer, I believe. Uh, we're not seeing any web services open. We're just seeing the traditional LDAP. We're seeing RPC. We're seeing 445. We do see 88, which does confirm it's very likely a domain controller. This is Kerberos's port. Uh, this is the port that the, the key distribution centers listen on. So usually when you see port 88 open, it's almost always a DNS, uh, a, a domain. It's almost always a domain controller. Uh, another clue is this port 53. Um, port 53 being open on TCP on the TCP side means that the target is a DNS server, and domain controllers are almost always the DNS servers for the domains that they sit on. So for domain controllers, you'll usually see port 53 open as well. Have you done any of the hack the box enterprise rooms like Dante? Yes, I've done offshore. And I think that might be it. I think that might be it. I've done offshore though. Um, yeah, so let's do, let's start a full port end map scan before we go any further.
Okay. And now we can come over here and we can crack map exec it. We can try a null session with uh, no username and no password. Should always try this. It's a common misconfiguration. So we do see the domain is actually blackfield.local. Uh, sometimes nmap produces that tack .local0, and I don't really know why. Try tack guest. We'll try the guest account. Sometimes the guest account is configured with no password, like it is right now. We do see that the guest account is configured with no password, chat. Alas and alack. Let's see what shares we have available to us. Hack the box gives very strong try harder vibes. They're getting better about that, but in the old days, you couldn't even in the old days like 2019, you couldn't even like uh, make an account on Hack the Box without solving solving a simple CTF. Like there was no option on the website to make an account. Like you had to uh um it said it it told you blatantly you had to hack your way in as it were. And really the answer was that there was a JavaScript there was JavaScript being loaded by the page that you could trigger, um, that you could that you could trigger um, uh, through cur through like a curl command, for instance, and uh, force the uh, and send a send a, a and send a request to the register endpoint on your own. It was very simple. It's still like that. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was still like that. I haven't tried to make a new hack the box account. I thought that hack the box was just allowing people to register now. Um, Hack the Box used to be the only game in town as far as, like, like a fun, uh, learning platform for penetration testing. But then Try Hack Me came into the space with, and that, and now Offensive Security's Proving Grounds. So Hack the Box has been upping their game because of the competition. Which is great. Uh, what was I just gonna do? Oh, right. It's not like that anymore. I create okay. Well, now I'm getting now I'm getting different, different. Uh, I did, now now I'm getting different, uh, differing reports here. All I know is when I registered for Hack the Box, I had to commit complete a little CTF challenge. David Front fifty seven, thank you for the follow. You could easily find walkthroughs for it online if you wanted to. So we do see. We have read access to the IPC dollar share, which means we can do, and we also have this profiles dollar share. Let's go ahead and just copy this into our notes. Okay, so we, we wanna check out both of these shares. The IPC dollar share is a standard share. Uh, the, no the most important thing to note about that share is that you can do what's called an RID brute force and uh, get all usernames and gr all users and groups on the machine or in the domain in the entire domain it used to be like a browser console challenge if i remember right i had to i i uh, you had to send uh there was javascript on the page that hinted at a registration endpoint that wasn't actually being accessed by the page itself so you had to uh, you just had to use curl or the browser console to just go ahead and send the request. So we see quite a few accounts. We see quite a few probably automatedly uh, auto-generated accounts here. So if we have a list of users, what do we do now, chat? What do we do now with a list of users? I think I'm gonna do, uh, just gonna output this into cme.out. Yeah, we can as rep roast, not rasp, ASP rep. We're gonna AS, uh, not asp, not, uh, at, not asp, AS rep. We're gonna AS rep. You shouldn't be ashamed of using walkthroughs. Yeah, obviously, ideally, 
you would work through the box on your own. But if you're really hard stuck and you just have no idea where to go and you're just lost and demoralized, looking at a write-up isn't going to hurt you. I would just encourage you to, um, if you use a write-up, try to use a write-up for like little hints rather than just a tutorial of the box. Um, like little hints are, are uh, I think, are, are the are, are, are the are the are the ground you should live in, in my opinion. So we're waiting. I'm just outputting to a file, so it'll be easier to parse these uh, usernames. Ah, it's more satisfying to do it with a write-up. I hard disagree. I hard disagree. The satisfaction of solving a puzzle on your by yourself is uh, is exponentially greater than being led to the solution by the hand. Oh, okay. Without my bad. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I would agree with you then, White Cyber Duck. I usually buy flags. You used to be able to do that on raid forums. Raid forums had an entire like underground pseudo underground marketplace for buying and selling uh, hack the box flags. If you're at the point of giving up using a walkthrough to keep going and learning is the best thing to do at that point, yeah. Now it's just on Breached. I, I, I know about Breached. I've barely looked at it, honestly, since I've been told about it. Um, if Hack the Box flags are there, then I guess Breached is the new raid forums. I was only going to raid forums to get password dumps. Um, I wasn't really a, uh, a regular... Seems like your command is just stuck. It could be that crack map exec doesn't really like the uh, redirection of the output. Oh, we did get some stuff. Yeah, we got them all. That's fine. So we'll vim cme.out. All right, so we... We're going to do a command, percent %s to apply to the whole document. Uh, we'll choose the beginning of the string, all characters, going up to a backslash. I think that'll do it. We do need to uh, do that escape sequence. We change nothing. And there we go. And now we do it again for the other side. We're just trying to extract the username specifically out of this. So we'll take a space. Uh, space dot star. Um, uh, I might just want to delete some of those first. Let's go back up to the top of the document of the uh, document. Let's just uh, let's delete all of these lines. We just want the usernames. I don't know if this is a user or a group. It says it's an alias. I'll leave it in there. Can't hurt. We're trying to get just a raw list of usernames here. That is what we want. So at this point, we will percent %s. Space dot star end of string, replace it with nothing, and there we go. So we just do a little vim magic to remove, uh, to extract just the usernames out of that. And now we can do get uh, impact it, get np users. blackfield.local uh, it does want that slash at the end 10 10 10 192 is the IP address the users file is here and it is cme.out and we'll see and we'll, we'll try it we'll attempt this as rep roast and wow looky there chat You deleted administrator user? Uh, I don't think that matters. That was just a local administrator. 
I doubt that the local administrator, uh, the local administrator is not even a domain account, so it's not going to matter. So, uh, so basically we're checking for accounts that have, don't require pre-authentication set in Kerberos. Now you might ask, why would some, why would someone disable this? Uh, it is enabled by default. Pre-authentication is enabled by default. Um, uh, but I, I see it fairly commonly, honestly. Uh, for Usually it happens for single sign-on purposes. Like if you have a account that manages single sign-on for your domain, uh, it's common to see that account uh, have don't require pre-authentication set because that account needs to log in to the domain every single time someone uses single sign-on, uh, which is a gigantic, which is uh, a pretty large load on the network overall. So every single time someone logs in, there has to be another login that happens in the background um, while the single sign-on account logs in, and it's fucking night. It's a fucking nightmare. So um, it is pretty common to see as rep roasting with single sign-on accounts like that. How noisy is as rep roasting and Kerber roasting? It's very quiet if you do it correctly. This is not the correct way to do it. The way I'm doing it right here, not la not not quiet. This is super noisy and will get caught by robust um, defense, robust cyber defenders. But what you should do is run Bloodhound or PowerView to determine what spin to determine what the spins are for Kerber roasting, and then pick select spins that you think will have access to the things you want access to. Like SQL servers, for instance, um, are super, are, is super high value target. And then you Kerberos just that thing. And that's basically invisible. Um, it's not that it's invisible. Technically a Windows event is generated, but it's only one event uh, that looks the same as a sea of other events. So it's gonna be basically impossible to catch. Um, it's only noisy if you do the whole domain like we just did. That's all, that's when it becomes noisy. But if you're just doing one at a time, that's a different scenario entirely. All right, so we do have a hash here for the support user. Let's go ahead and grab that. Paste that in. John. Support.hash. Bloodhound is noisy too, so I, not in my experience. Uh, honestly, even in very robust, and I, I've always thought that Bloodhound is super noisy, and it is, kinda. If you run it with its default configuration, yeah, it's noisy. Why did it not? No password hash is loaded. Huh. Is John not able to... Parse this hash? It's possible John cannot parse this hash for some reason. Let's check it out. Um, uh, but if you use Bloodhound with the DC only, all you're doing is sending a bunch of LDAP requests to the, to the domain controller, which is happening all the time on a network. All the time on a network, the, the domain controller is handling LDAP requests, like from everywhere on the network. So yeah, you're sending a lot at once. You probably could detect it, but in my experience, even robust environments are not ca uh, do not catch it. Uh, if you use TAC DC only, if you use Bloodhound, if you just fire Bloodhound without the DC only flag, Bloodhound actually communicates with all computers on the network. Um, so then it becomes definitely very loud. But if you're just communicating with the domain controller, it's not as big of a deal. Uh, John. Uh, it, it does appear that maybe this is not. So it looks like there's a bug in John that it doesn't recognize this hash. Shit, I don't know if Hashcat is going to work. Hashcat has been weird for me lately, kids. Tech tap format KRB5 ASREP. We'll try that.
format equals. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Shit. Well, let me see if Hashcat will work. The last time... I don't like using Hashcat on stream. I'm very uncomfortable using Hashcat on stream. It has crashed the stream before. Uh, Hashcat does not play nice with my graphics drivers. Uh, at least it doesn't like to share them, I should clarify. My uh, Hashcat does not like to share my graphics drivers. I might just look up a write-up, or have one of you look up a write-up and tell me if I'm supposed to crack this hash. Uh, because I don't want to risk crashing the stream. It has, like, in numerous, in multiple times I have crashed the stream uh, using Hashcat at the same time. Not every single time, but it's kind of a crapshoot. Crack station? Crack station won't work for an Azrep hash. Uh, let's see if... Okay, I'm not going to risk it. Um, someone just look up a write-up and tell me if I'm supposed to crack this hash. I do need to crack it? Alright, just tell me what the password is. Just tell me what the password is. I don't want to risk crashing the stream. Um, it looks like there's a bug with John with this particular format. Zero, zero, black. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I've cracked 100 passwords on stream. There's a reason I use John inside of the VM. Again, num uh, it's happened at least three times that my the stream has crashed when I've run Hashcat on it. That's why I use John on the stream. Because I use Hashcat for my job. Uh, but... Uh, Hashcat does not like to play nice. Okay. Thank you very much, chat. Sorry about that, chat. I don't like to do that, but, uh, again, I don't want to risk crashing the stream. Uh, Hashcat is very greedy for resources when you run it. It essentially will say the entire graphics cards are mine. These uh, this, this graphics card is mine. All of its memory belongs to me. And right now my graphics cards are... Obviously encoding video and sending it over the internet. Um, so it has happened before multiple times where Hashcat has just decided to crash the stream. And, and by the way, when it crashes the stream, it crashes the whole machine. The whole machine crashes. Uh, it'll just, the whole machine will just lock up. So it'll kill the stream, it'll kill the crack, it'll kill the entire operating system, we'll have to restart. Uh, we definitely don't want to, we'd rather not do that. Uh, we'd rather not go through that. It just doesn't seem worth it if we can just look up whether, uh, whether the, pa the hash cracks or not. All right. Crack map exec. SMB. 10101921. Tech U. Support. Tech P. Like IPsec, for instance. IPsec, for instance, has an entire alternate server for password cracking. Like he's, like, he's got a server that is just used for password cracking for exactly that reason. Because um, be, be, uh, he doesn't really... I don't know if he really plays video games a whole lot. I think he does. His fucking avatar is an avatar of zero. But I don't know if he plays, like, modern video games that require graphics cards or whatever. Um, if I'm gonna have, like, four graphics cards attached to a machine, it's gonna be fucking playing some goddamn video games. Um, but yeah, maybe he does mine crypto with it or something. Maybe he mines crypto with it. My point is that when he needs to crack so when he needs to crack something, he has an entire server to do it separately. And that's fine, because Hashcat can use up all of those, uh, graphics cards without a problem. But if you're streaming at the same time, Hashcat does not like to play nice with streaming software. So we do see we can connect with Black Knight. Let's do shares. Can you use Colab Cat? Technically, I could. It's a little bit more involved, though. And I, I don't use Colab Cat like at all, honestly. Um, I can't use it for work. 
Um, and most things that are supposed to crack will crack with John or in Rock U or something like that in CTF, so there's really no need. All right, so we have a little bit more access here. We do have this profiles dollar share we never actually looked on. And we now we have access to the net logon and sysvol share, so we're probably going to want to look at both of those. Let's look at the profiles directory first. Because I forgot about that. We didn't look at that one before. Support. Let's copy the password. Okay, we're logged in. Is this just the user directory? Hmm. Okay. There's a lot here. Oh boy. Uh, let's just try going into this guy's. See what we're dealing with in each of these. Nothing. Uh, so... Uh, help. Is there an equivalent SMB client tree command? Is there an equivalent to the tree command in SMB client? I just want to list the contents of all these directories. Can you do dir star? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't work. Dir dot slash star, I wonder? No. Uh, type recurse and then dir. Okay, that's that's good. Thank you. Whoever said that, j.info, thank you. Nice. This is just what we want. We want to see if there's anything in any of these directories. I figured it was something like that. I know you have to turn recursion on. So we're just going to see if there's any files in any of these directories. And see if we can... This might just be a rabbit hole. But we should be thorough. Pacemaker, thanks for the follow. Gambit, thanks for the two, the seven months. Welcome back. Uh, we forgot to do Stream Raiders as well. Let's do Stream Raiders. All right, let's start Stream Raiders. Still nothing, right? No one saw it? Yeah, there's quite a few folders. And unfortunately, we do have to look at every one of them before we rule this, uh, this share out as a rabbit hole. I bet it's the last one. We already looked at the last one. We saw a bunch of automatically generated profiles when we... Uh, uh, when we did the RID brute force. So I imagine this is just more automated stuff. Magic Mitodiha, welcome. Can't remember if CF, it's CME. It's CME. CME or Spider as well. Uh, I just don't remember how to use that. And I was already in SMB client, so I wondered if there was a way to do it in SMB client. Guess these are just freebie users. Yeah, they're probably auto generated. Uh, we saw a bunch of auto generated accounts. Not these accounts. These appear to be different accounts. Uh, we saw a bunch of auto generated domain accounts, though, uh, when we did the RID brute force. Well, some of these are legitimate domain accounts. We saw one for the support user, for instance. Yeah, we could have done mget star as well, but I think it would have created all these folders. Um, and I didn't want to do that. We're just seeing if there are any files in here. Looks like we're in the Z's, finally. 
Okay, no files, so rabbit hole. Rabbit hole spotted, chat. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole, hmm? Uh, there was the sysval share. The sysval share usually contains information on group policy. So that's worth taking a look at. Login failure. Uh, let me just crack map exec the shares again. It's a pleasure to follow this educational channel. Thanks for bringing out helpful content. Hey, thanks for being here, my man. It's good to have you in the chat. Will it list hidden files? It's a good question. Um, I think so. It says we have read access to the sysfall share. I guess we'll check nat log on. Uh, I might have typed the wrong password. Uh, let's make sure the password I, I copied and pasted was correct. Oh, there we go. I must have put it, uh, copied and pasted the wrong password. So here's the... Yeah, so the sysfall share contains group policy information. See if there's anything in here. Uh, scripts. See if there are any fine additions. Nope. Uh, policies. Uh, take a look, see. We might just want to M get star here. Okay, let's do. All right, what is it? Is it recurse on? And then M get star. Oh, uh, oh shit. It's M. What? It's recurse on. And if I don't want it to ask me for every single thing, how do I get it to not ask me for every single thing? Oh, come on. Prompt off. That sounds right. Yeah, I've done it before. I know there's a way. I'm, uh, usually it's like prompt off or force or something like that. Okay, uh, let's recurse on, prompt off, and get star. Okay, so we're getting all these. See if there's anything valuable in any of these files. CD blackfield.local. Uh, there was nothing in scripts, right? Yep. CD policies. Uh, I don't think this is not interesting. No, it's not. Uh, CD machine, I guess. We'll start there. Uh, uh, less registry dot policy. Yeah, we get some. We have administrator dot blackfield, but these are just public keys and certificates. Not interesting. Microsoft. Oh, shit. Let's hack the box. Blackfield. It's just tree. So we already looked at this. Uh, we can try that, I guess. See if that's anything. Yes. So these are binary files and unfortunately they're Unicode.
I could convert them, but I'm just looking to see if there's anything that's interesting in here. I don't think there's anything interesting in there. Yeah, the, the, it, unfortunately, it's in Unicode. That's why it's all fucked up in the terminal, because the terminal doesn't display Unicode by default. Uh, okay, so let's do the other one. There was net logon, the net logon share. So let's hop on there really quickly. What else can we do, chat? There's some other stuff we can do that I haven't started to do yet. There's quite a few things we can do, actually. Yeah, we can Kerber roast. What else can we do? Nothing on there. Okay, so we'll Kerberos first. Impact it. Get user spins. You do need credentials to Kerberos. So it's blackfield.local slash support. 10, 10, 10, 192. Okay. I forgot to do this request part, but it's fine. No entries found. So we actually have no spins. No spins on this network. Well, what else can we do, chat? I'm just going to start doing it. We can run Bloodhound, but I like to do this in a Docker container because Bloodhound has burned me in the past. Our uh, Blood Python, the Python implementation of Bloodhound has burned me in the past by not finding important shit um, because I wasn't running the most up-to-date Bleeding Edge version. So I no longer trust it. So we will run it in a Docker container to make sure we're getting the most uh, up-to-date version. Oh, I'm pasting the password of the box. CD bloodhound.py. Okay. What does it want me to do? Docker build, tac T bloodhound. So this is a Docker build. It's going to read this Docker file that's right here. This Docker file tells it, let's take a look at this Docker file. I don't want to just race through this uh, since many of you probably are not familiar with Docker. So basically what this does, this Docker file outlines uh, how a container works, uh, how to set up a container. It tells Docker, here's exactly what I want you to do uh, to build a container. So you're going to start with Python 3.7 on Alpine Linux, uh, which is like a minimalist installation of Linux for like IoT devices. Uh it's going to attach some metadata to it. Uh, it's going to create a working directory called slash bloodhound data. It's going to mount that working directory. And then it's going to run all these commands to install stuff. Does that make sense? That's how Docker works. And then it's going to run bin bash. That's all it's going to do. Okay, so now Docker is going to build the container, and then it's going to start running all those installations. Been messing with Docker all day. Docker is very useful, um, particular to, particularly to a penetration tester. I highly recommend that you become um, familiar with Docker. It can make your life so much easier in many different ways. There's a thousand reasons why a penetration tester would need to run, need to have like an alternate dis like environment to run something in. Or like, for example, if you have an exploit script that's written in Python 2, 
do you actually install Python 2? And no. No, we don't say it with me chat. We don't we just say no to Python 2. That you know, Dare would have been more successful. I don't like if you live in the United States, Dare would have been 10 times more successful if it was just trying to get people to not install Python 2. Just only you can prevent Python 2. But if you have a, an exploit script that's written in Python 2, then run a script, uh, then then just start up a Python 2 Docker container. That way, it's nice and clean. After you're done, uh, the container gets deleted and you're done with it. Like, it, like, don't, don't, like, this is the, it's, it's, it's like a VM that's super easy to set up. Uh, the man Opak, thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. Or you can use virtual environments, which is easier than Docker. You cannot, yeah. Yeah, you can use Python virtual environments uh, like PipX or uh, Poetry. That's also available to you. You still have to install it, though, even if it's on a Python virtual environment, which sucks. I still hold Docker is better. Because it's so easy. Docker is all really easy to use once you get used to it. So then we're just going to copy this in here just for easy... Uh, for ease of use. I should just add myself to the Docker group. I don't know why I don't. I'm too principled. All right, so now we are... We have a new prompt because we're inside of our Docker container. Does that make sense? We've now... We have mounted... We've uh, we've now we've mounted our present working directory on our host inside of the Docker container, so we can like transport files and and things of that nature. So now we're gonna run Bloodhound, um, and I'm gonna look in the Necronomicon for the correct syntax. Bloodhound Python is extremely particular about syntax. Okay, um, Bloodhound Python uh, really uh, really wants very specific syntax. Um, so, let me just, where the fuck, is it enumeration? Uh, maybe it's under tools. Bloodhound, perfect. Here we go, that's what I need. I always get it wrong, so we're just double checking. The syntax is very, very particular. Okay, so collection method all. Support user, the password, okay, so this is the, I don't think we need the TAC GC option. Attack DC, it wants the fully qualified domain name of the domain controller. Uh, which is interesting because... did we Do we actually know what that is? It's just Blackfield. It says domain blackfield.local. Yeah, just uh, DC01. So the fully qualified domain name is this with the domain after it. So DC01.blackfield.local would be the fully qualified domain name. And that's what Bloodhound Python wants. It will, it'll fail and throw some kind of dumb fucking error about, um, uh, DNS if you don't have that. If you just try to put like DC01 here. The GC is the global catalog. It's usually not necessary for this, uh, for small domains like this uh, CTF is. There we go. So we're not getting any errors. This is good news. There we go. So Bl uh, Bloodhound is running. Uh, so what Bloodhound is doing is it's sending a whole bunch of 
uh, it's sending it's sending a whole fuckload of uh, uh, LDAP com LDAP commands to uh, LDAP queries to the domain controller to try and enumerate it. It looks like there are a whole bunch of like machine accounts here that it's trying to query and failing because it doesn't uh, because these computer objects don't actually exist. Uh, whoever built this box put up a lot of dummy stuff on this domain. And here we have some JSON files. This is the output of Bloodhound. How do we view this, do you ask? Good question. We exit out of the Docker container. Um, so now we're done with Docker. We're back in our regular host. Uh, sudo apt tech y install Bloodhound. I have to install Bloodhound. This is a fresh installation of, or more or less fresh installation of Kali. I don't believe I have Bloodhound installed in it. There's a dope video on not fucking up your Python from Bite Blight Beater Bleeder Change Your Fucking Life. Hey, po post that link in chat. I want to see it too. Uh, I I usually use pipx for stuff like crackmap exec and uh, Bloodhound Python. You could set up for pipx as well. Um, I, I just find it easier to use Docker because I'm more familiar with Docker. I know that Husky loves poetry. That's his deal. Drop that video link in chat if you if you have it. Uh, okay, so we got Bloodhound installed. sudo neo4j console. So we're starting the neo4j console. I'm going to have to set up Bloodhound because this is the first time I'm running it. Okay, so we have to go to browse to this web server. I think it's probably SSL. Secure connection failed. Why are we failing? Empty reply from server. Am I forgetting how to do this? I'm pretty sure you just browse to this. Did I choose the wrong? Oh, I just looked at this instead of this. Okay. My bad. It's been a little while since I've gone through this process. So now we have to set up the database. Um, we'll use the default. Authentication type will go username and password. Username will be Bloodhound and password. Connect. Uh, I think it needs to be Neo4j, Neo4j, actually, for the first login. I think the initial setup is just Neo4j, Neo4j. And then it's going to have me change my password. Yeah, here we go. Uh, new password. Okay, change password. Okay, we are connected. All right, and we're done here. That's all we needed there. So now we just come back over here and we go bl and we just run Bloodhound. All right. So Bloodhound wants to connect to the database we just set up. So Neo4j and then the password I put in. We log in. And we are connected to Bloodhound. Obviously now we don't have eyeballs. Uh, I now have a chat full of the melting, melting Nazis from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, because we are in light mode. So let me just go ahead and turn that down. That's way better. You are welcome, chat. Uh, import graph. I don't know. We want to import data. Upload data. We're going to go home. Hack the box. Blackfield. Unfortunately, you do have to do these one at a time. It won't let you do them more than one at once. So we started with the computers one, and we're just going to do every single one of these. Domains. Uploading. Uploading. 
Hack the box. Blackfield users. Okay, we'll hit clear finish. And if you hit this again, Bloodhound's going to complain in a snarky way. Um, so, yeah, just uh, that's a fun fact there. So now all of the... You see that Bloodhound hasn't ostensibly changed. That's just because we have to put in a query. So Bloodhound has some default queries put in. We can just analysis, find all domain admins. And we see that administrator at blackfield.local is a domain admin. So what has just happened? What have we done? So we ran... Uh, Bloodhound Python in a Docker container to ext uh, to query the domain controller for all domain information. Basically, all information that we can get on the domain. Uh, from there, we got a bunch of JSON files. Which I can show you again. We got all these JSON files. That's these. And those are meant to be uploaded. If you just look at these JSON files, we'll look at the users one. The first part is the date and a timestamp. So you can see just, this is all just domain data. Like you got SIDs in here, uh, domains, uh, you got usernames, uh, permissions, all kinds of stuff. Okay, all kinds of stuff. Blood. This is meant to be read by this application, Bloodhound. And it's meant it produces this really nice GUI output that all my clients love to see because it looks really, really nice and makes me look really professional. Um, and uh, um, and it help and this is invaluable uh, for visualizing domain relationships and finding uh, active directory misconfigurations. Does that make sense? If I'm not mistaken, drag the but you can you can drag and drop. I just prefer to do the upload data thing. You can also drag and drop as well. So we now have all of those JSON files loaded into the database. We had to I only had to go through that database setup thing because this is the first time I'm using Bloodhound on this Kali. Uh, that is the normal install process for Bloodhound. Um, but now that Bloodhound is here, I've uploaded a bunch of stuff to the database, and Bloodhound is now parsing that data. And uh, drawing cute little lines. Like it says that administrator is a member of the domain admins a group. Must hunt. We can make this bigger. Bloodhound is an absolutely invaluable tool. I use it. It's one of my most frequently used tools. Um, I, I, as far as on legitimate engagements. Uh, for a red team, ass red team assessments. Um, I use it religiously. Uh, without Bloodhound, I wouldn't have a job. That's not true. But it'd be much harder to do my job with Power View than it is with Bloodhound. Mental note, make sure to use the latest version of Bloodhound. Yeah, one time, I don't remember what box it was. Uh, but there was a box we were doing that had... And we ran Bloodhound and we just didn't find anything. And chat was... And I was just lost. I couldn't figure out what to do. I enumerated everything. And I'm like, well, fuck, what am I missing? And I just start looking at the Bloodhound output again. And chat said, you're supposed to be seeing something in Bloodhound that you're not seeing. So I just go through Bloodhound... And I don't see anything. And chat's like, oh my god, it's not there. Like, okay, like, what's what's wrong? Apparently there was a GMSA, which is a recent, a more, a more recent uh, addition of Windows to the Active Directory climate. Uh, uh, GMSAs are Windows' answer to um, weak service accounts, uh, passwords, and Kerber roasting. Uh, GMSAs are, uh, it, GMSA stands for Group Managed Service Account. It's essentially a service account that is that has a randomized password that's updated every day. Um, so and it's never going to be cracked. So it's essentially um, Microsoft's answer to service accounts. Uh, but the version of Bloodhound I was using was apparently out of date and not able to detect GMSAs. When I ran it in a Docker container, I saw it clear as day. So ever since then, I'm like, I got to run Bloodhound in a Docker container. Uh, we can look for principles with DC sync rights. We see that the machine account has it and the domain admins have it. That's totally normal. Uh, computers with unsupported operating systems, none. Domain trusts. You can click on all these basic ones. It'll also tell you like, um, oh, it actually divides these up now. Um, find Kerber, list all Kerberostable accounts. We see there are no actual Kerberostable accounts. There are no spins other than KRBTGT. Um, KRBTGT is the Kerberos service account itself, the key distribution center itself. It is a service account and has a spin, but its password is a ra is randomly generated 
uh, is a randomly generated NTLM hash, it's never going to crack. So um, impacket automatically disregards this one. That's why we didn't see any spins, even though this spin existed. Uh, find as rep roastable users. We see support at blackfield.local for as rep roastable users. Um, so what I like to do is look at the accounts that I've compromised. We can look at support first. We can right click and we can mark user as owned. And this little skull will appear over it uh, to, to tell Bloodhound that we have we own this account. And we can see what permissions this account has. This is usually where I like to start in Bloodhound. Why is this window shitty? Okay. This window is like slightly too skinny. Maybe I need to zoom out. Nope, that doesn't seem to make a difference. Okay, whatever. The window is slightly too small and I don't seem to be able to resize it. Okay, we're not seeing any inbound GPOs. It's got password never expires set to true, which uh, is pretty common. Nothing of particular interest here. Uh, it's not trusted for delegation or anything, so no sporting uh, behavior there. Uh, we do see we are in some groups. Let's see what groups we're in. Uh, just domain users. And we can see what, because we're in the domain users group, we're in the everyone group, the users group, the authenticated users group, and uh, pre-Windows 2000 compatible group. Uh, we have no local admin rights. Feels bad, man. Uh, we do see first degree object control. Ah, this is interesting. We see force change password permission. That seems good. That seems pretty good. On audit 2020 at blackfield.local. That seems pretty good. Okay. So, and what if we don't know what this is? What if we don't know what this is or how to exploit it? Well, we can right click on it and we can go help. The user support dot and Bloodhound will actually tell us because Bloodhound is just that good. The user support dot blackfield dot local has the capability to change the user password without knowing the user's current password. Abuse info. Um, I'm probably just going to use Impacket. There is an Impacket script that will do this. I actually. This actually reminds me of a recent engagement I was on. I had this exact situation um, where I could change another an admin user's password and I was able to do it with an impacted script. So I may look into that again. Uh, you can use, uh, if, you can ex if you have code execution on the box, you can use the net user command. I do not recommend doing this. I do not under any circumstances. Well, to be clear, I don't recommend doing it on a red team assessment. The net.exe executable is one of the most monitored executables um, by endpoint protection. Um, I do not recommend using this executable at all um, on red if you're trying to be stealthy. Um, so you can also use power view. We can't do that either because... Uh, we can't do that either because I, I don't think we can execute commands on the target. Did we check that? I don't know if we actually checked that. Let's go ahead and check it right now. Crack map exec. Uh, support 10, 10, 10. Or no, it's not support. It's 10, 10, 10, 192. TAC U support. TAC P. Uh, we can do tack x who am I to see if we can execute commands uh, we cannot execute commands we can also try winrm
Okay, nope, no joy there. So we do not actually have remote code execution. So where was that impacket script that I used to change password? I think it was an impacket script. SMB password, that seems right. Alternative master, alternative to SMB passwd tool and intended to be used for changing passwords remotely over SMB. It can perform the password change when the current password is expired and supports NTLM hashes as a new password value instead of a plain text value. It might it says it needs to be expired. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's meant to be used when the password was expired, uh, which was the case when I used it. No background music. There is background music. It's just kind of quiet. I'll turn it up a little bit. One second. There you go. I got big in big trouble for changing passwords my first AD pen test. You do want to avoid it if you can get away with it, Bo. Um, you do definitely want to avoid it um, um, uh, if you can get away with it. Um, sometimes you just can't get away with it. Um, and if you're on a red team assessment, usually the scope is very wide open. Um, if you're on a red team assessment, you're usually expected, you're trying to be as quiet as possible, so you're not expected to bring services down or anything like that. Uh, and the scope is usually much wider open. Like, you just do whatever you want, just compromise us. Like, because again, you're doing adversary emulation, okay? You're doing adversary emulation. And is an adversary going to shy away from changing a password if they, if they need it to advance to their objectives? Obviously, no. It's all about what your objectives are as a red teamer. And uh, I, honestly, the only requirements on my red team assessment as far as scope is usually just, I usually have a target and then it's like, don't intentionally DOS us. And that's it. That's all it is. So let's see what there's a convenient way to do this from Cali. This seems good. Looks like Metasploit has a module for it. Okay, I don't want to do that. I like they're using MS MS08067. I don't know. And you're just going to change the fucking Okay, well this was worthless some fucking skid shit. Okay, I don't I don't Reset Windows passwords with Kali Linux. There's got to be a convenient way to do this. Scope is all reachable systems and only no DOS. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for But for a pen test, you're probably going to have a more restrictive scope. Like, they're not going to want you to touch certain hosts. But for a red team, it's very common for the clients to just say... Look, we just want to see if you can get access to this data using any means necessary. Just don't DOS us on purpose. Like, that's literally it. Cause, and that's the idea, because with a red team, you're doing adversary emulation. A pen test is just trying to find vulnerabilities. They're not doing adversary emulation. Um, you're just trying to find vulnerabilities in the target environment. Uh, ad if, you're doing, if you're a red teamer, you're pretending to be a criminal. You're trying to behave like a criminal will, and you're testing the organization's ability to detect and respond to you. Uh, I also got in trouble for DC syncing. Bo, you just have shitty clients, my dude. DC syncing does absolutely nothing to the target. They said we didn't think you would get that far. Well, what? <laughs> and in before that client was just responder to domain admin immediately. <laughs> like, I bet you, Bo, correct me if I'm wrong, but that client was just literally responder to domain admin in a half an hour. Is Am I, am I wrong? Did you check if the password is already expired? That's a good question. Good point. Let's see if it has expired. 
Audit. At blackfield.local. Let's take a look see. Password last changed in 2020. Password never expires. So its password is not expired. Um, how can I go about doing this? Uh, can crack map exec do it, I wonder? I wonder if crack map exec can do it. Crack map exec can basically do everything I need. I use crack map exec. Um, if I'm on network, I use crack map exec every single day. Like it is, it's one of my most, as far as number of commands run, uh, I would say crack map exec is the most, is my most used tool. Does it have a password change module? I wonder. Uh, let's just list modules. Tack, uh, CME, SMB, TAC L. See what modules there are. Is there a change password module? Uh, Crack Map Exec is extremely powerful. It's one of those tools that I recommend everybody get familiar with. If you're planning on ever testing, if you're trying planning on being a pen tester in the real world, uh, you're absolutely going to need Crack Map Exec. It's going to make your life so much easier. You have no idea. It's basically all lateral movement options rolled into one. It doesn't look like they have one for changing a password. Check this link. Let's take a look, see. What do we have? Yeah, this is in PowerShell, though. Oh, it has on Linux. Okay, we can use RPC Client. Easy. Thank you. Okay, easy enough. RP I should have thought of RPC Client. Thank you. I just had Impact it on the brain because I did this. I did something similar to this on an assessment recently. And I was like, oh, I can just use that again. And then that, that didn't work. <laughs> Uh, attacker user, which is support, and my password. Hopefully this works and I don't have to log into RPC client, especially. W, it's uh, uh, blackfield.local. Set user info to audit 2020. And we'll make the password Cthulhu Patagon one two three exclamation point. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to set the uh, IP address. Am I not? Uh, set the IP address. Uh, attack I. See if that does it. And it didn't like that. What is it complaining about? Let's just log into it and we'll put in the commands. Oh, come on, dude. I, I hate RPC client. This is why I don't use it. It's, what, what are you complaining about? Okay. Maybe it's not TAC I. 10, 10, 10, 1, 9, 2. Uh, okay, so we have to put in a user. Is it capital U for support? Uh, it's going to be, and then it's going to be capital D for domain, I think. <sighs> Can I put in a domain? Maybe it's just work group. 
I think it's work group. There we go. Put in the password. There we go. Cool. So we now are logged in. So let's do... Where did I put that? Okay. We do this. Set user info. Audit 2020. 23. And we have to... The only restrictions on the password are we often have to comply with password policies. Okay. Let's see if that worked for us. Yes. Good work, team. We did it. Whoever recommended this RPC client thing, I'll put that in the Necronomicon. Thank you. I'll put that in the Necronomicon because that's useful. Um, we got there. We got there. So we have now compromised Audit 2020, which means we can come in here and mark this as owned. Okay. And we'll see if we can get user. Uh, crack map exec. Uh, we'll try WinRM. See if we have WinRM access. <laughs> Alas and alack, we do not. Well, let's see if we have... We do not have code execution yet. I guess we can try it through SMB, but if it's not working with, that, with WinRM... I doubt it will work with SMB. Can you go over RPC client again really quick? Yeah, sure. So RPC client, I usually don't like to use it because the it's very obtuse what the syntax is. Um, and there are usually tools that will do it for us. But this uses the RPC uh, service on 135 here. Um, basically, it's, it's RPC stands for remote procedure call. Uh, it's what it's the way Windows machines communicate with one another over a network, essentially, um, putting it very simply. Um, and uh, uh, a guy just pointed out that you, you can change a password that way. So uh, I appreciate whoever pointed that out in chat. That was very helpful. Um, and uh, so all we did was we logged in. You we had to specify the work group, which is usually just the domain. Um, I, it, someone said you didn't have to supply that, but I did it anyways, because we want to do a domain login. Um, and it made more sense to me. We put the password in and then we just put in this command, which is from payloads, all the things. Where did I put it? This command right here. That's it. When do you upload upload the updated Necronomicon? Um, I don't have like a set schedule for doing it. I when I just feel like I've updated it significantly, I'll put it up there. A hunter must hunt. Any good tips or links for evading AV detections with Cobalt Strike? Uh, Artifact Kit. Artifact Kit is your best tool for evading. Artifact Kit allows you to customize the ex customize every basically everything uh, that Cobalt Strike produces. All EXEs it produces. Um, all payloads that it produces, it lets you customize all of that with Artifact Kit. Um, there's also the Resource Kit. The Resource Kit lets you customize it like, like payload strings, like PowerShell strings and obfuscate them and so on and so forth. Um, um, so the Artifact Kit and the Resource Kit are the built-in uh, ways of uh, obfuscating Cobalt Strike stuff. Uh, this is really the raw power of Cobalt Strike that it has so much easy customizability just built into it. Um, and it's also extremely modular. So um, right now, the, the current hotness with Cobalt Strike is beacon object files. Um, it used to be PowerShell. Way back in the day, we ran PowerShell um, uh, to live off the land. Uh, then AMSI was invented, and antivirus started detecting on PowerShell. 
Uh, so we started running .NET uh, executables in memory with execute assembly, um, which we still do uh, largely, but that is now AMSI aware as well. So you need to obfuscate those executables oftentimes. Um, that still does work though. Um, uh, but the new hotness is beacon object files, which basically means that uh, it basically means there are custom C programs that modify the behavior of the beacon itself. Um, and doing your tradecraft within the beacon process itself rather than doing any code injection or anything is the, the current sneakiness. Where is the Necronomicon located? It is located on my Patreon. It is a Patreon benefit. And the, the Necronomicon is just my personal cheat sheet that I use for Red Team Ops. Uh, I add to it and update it frequently. Okay, so we do have Audit 2020. Uh, let's see, we don't have code execution, but let's check shares. Let's see if we have any additional shares access. Okay, uh, we had access to these four shares before, if I remember correctly, and we checked them all. Uh, this is the new one, uh, which makes sense because it says it's a forensic audit share. So let's go ahead and make sure to check that out. SMB client 192 audit 2020. Uh, no, it's uh, forensic. Okay. Dur. Denied. Oh, I didn't log in correctly. It's capital U. Log on failure. Oh, I'm putting in the fucking support password. Cthulhu Photogen123 exclamation point. Okay, dur. All right, so we got a bunch of crap. Uh, let's go ahead and do recurse on. Let's do what we did before. Recurse on uh, prompt off mget star, and we'll just download this entire share. It looks like we're getting quite a bit of juicy info here, chat. Medikin, welcome. Coco Loco Poco with the 15 months. My goodness. Welcome back to the All Has Red team. Johnny Harari, thank you for the follow. Adamir, thank you for the follow. Antoine, thank you for the follow. Orbital Gun bringing Kutaya, Kutayak Boss into the cult. Welcome, Kutayak Boss. Thank you so much, Orbital Gun, for your continued and unreasonable support of the stream. Uh, 5642, thank you for the follow. I can see that that's Hex, but I don't know what characters that resolves to. It's true. This is not a cult. This is not a cult. Uh, for legal reasons, we it is a uh, a passionate club of cephalopod enthusiasts. Time flies like hell. It really does. I can't believe I've been streaming for that long. It's crazy to me. All right, so we're waiting. We're getting a whole bunch of crap. I'll have to remember to delete this afterwards. We have a compound. We 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 do not have a compound except for the house in Lake Ta in uh, Lake Tahoe. The compound, if anything, is the house in Lake Tahoe. So I'm seeing some things here. What do we think we might get from this chat? Conhost.zip, ctfmon.zip, dllhealth.zip. This looks like memory dumps of processes. It says memory analysis, and it's memory dumps of processes. What process would we really like a memory dump of, chat? What process in particular would be very nice? Yeah, a little Elsass. We we are big fans of of Elsass, okay? The local system authority subsystem service. Our local so security authority subsystem service. 
We are big fans of the LSAS process because every time someone logs into Windows, their credentials are stored in LSAS. If we have a memory dump of the LSAS process, which we do, hello, hello, my friend. Uh, we'll do Stream Raiders, yes. I just forgot about it. I started Stream Raiders and then completely forgot about it. This is where the fun begins. This is... We have located the beginning of the fun, chat. We love... We do love Elsass, don't we, folks? We're... We're big fans of the Elsa Of Elsass. Let's do Stream Raiders while this is going. So I, I I somewhat regret um, downloading this entire file, this entire thing. Dump the SAM. It's not the SAM file. The LSAS process is where is where authentication information is stored for all users who are currently logged into the system. Users who are not currently logged in will not have their credentials in LSAS. Uh, the SAM file stores credential information for local users on disk, different places. Uh, LSAS is what Mimikatz is manipulating. Uh, when you run Mimikatz on a target, it is the LSAS process that Mimikatz is accessing. Man, we just clapped that boss's cheeks. Okay, um... Do we want skin or tokens, chat? Skin or tokens? Which way are we going? We can only get one of these two. Do we want skins or do we want tokens? This is skins, this is tokens. I thought if an admin logs into a system and logs off, its creds are still in LSAS until it's rebooted. No. Um, the admin has to have an active session. If the set... If it depends... Okay. It depends on how the admin logs in. Some ways of logging in, like if you use um, Windows Remote Management, will have the session persist. Um... Or remote desktop, I think, works this way, too. Some ways of logging in will have the session persist after the user closes this, uh, closes the window or whatever. Uh, just because of how that's just how that particular technology works. But the user must have an, as an active session on the box. Um, like, there has to be an active logon session uh, for the credentials to be in LSAS. Is LSAS dynamic? I mean, it doesn't get refreshed with restart because of RAM. It sits in RAM. It's a process running in RAM. So it is dynamic, yes. It's, uh, God, it's just still going. Jesus. I'm bored. I have LSAS. I'm good. Uh, all I need is this. That's all I need. The rest of this is boring. Okay. So now I need the Python implement imp implementation of Mimikatz. You could get the admins TGT, maybe? Yeah, some TGTs are often still stored in memory after the admin is done. Um... All right, so that's all we need. I now need the Python implementation of Mimikatz, which is PyPyCats. Can I run that in a Docker container or do I have to install it? You could also transmit this to a Windows machine and run Mimikatz on there. Is there a Docker file? Tell me there's a Docker file. No Docker file. Okay, fine. Pip3 install pi pi pats. Okay, so we're installing. Okay. Pi pi cats. Uh, I think it's LSA. And then I think it wants dump file and then the, the name of the dump file. Uh, it's mini dump. LSA, mini dump, and then the location, which is lsas.dump. Yeah, yeah, give me those credentials. A fine addition to my collection. All right, did we get any more users in here? 
So, uh, a lot of these are going to be the the uh, machine account here. Uh, any account in Active Directory that ends in a dollar sign is a machine account. Uh, this is a machine account. Um, so, uh, you, as you can see, we can see the password in clear text here. Uh, but this is just a, a randomized hex string. This isn't useful to us. Uh, we need users who were logged in when this dump was taken. So we're looking for usernames that are not the service account, that are not the machine account. Ah! SVC backup. Oh! Whenever you see backup, it's a little bit like this, chat. We love backups, don't we, folks? We're big backup fans. Um, oh my god. StarCraft always goes so hard. It's insane. Um, you should be excited whenever a backup happens, chat. Or whenever you get access to an account that you think can back up stuff, you should be excited. Why? Because backup backups by virtue of how backups work tend to have elevated permissions. Okay? They tend to have elevated permissions. They need backups by the nature of how they work tend to have the permissions necessary to access the data that they need to back up. Like, that's that's just how backups work. Secondly, backups are expected to be copying data and all kinds of stuff. You're, you're not really all that concerned as a defender if you see your backup copying files from one place to another, uh, which is what red teams do when they have to exfiltrate data. So, we love backup accounts, okay? We're big backup accounts fans. And we have an NT hash here. But no clear text password. That's pretty normal. Yeah, so W Digest was not enabled when this uh, was taken. So it is, uh, which it is not enabled by default. So I would be, I would expect to see that. Uh, let's just make sure that's the only credentials we got. Ooh, administrator. Oh my god. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that sounds good. That's a fine addition to my collection. I don't think this is probably going to work. I imagine this password has probably been changed. Um, but it's still worth a shot. And in the real world, this is a fucking gold mine right here. That's That's cash money right there. So yeah, we see a lot more login sessions with the machine account, which is normally what you see in one of these. You never use CrackStation or similar? I do. Yeah, I'm going to use CrackStation. I'm going to I don't use it on assessments because um, you should never uh, put your clients hashes, your clients live password hashes into any online service. Uh, that's just incredibly ir irresponsible. Valhalla. Yeah, just the machine account. We have that SVC backup account. And that's it. Uh, we have some data protection API information. Uh, which we may want to keep. We'll take that. Just in case. I was only referring to these boxes. That we, yeah, these, it's fine to use... Um, it's fine to use CrackStation for boxes that we do on stream, of course. Hi, honey. Star just walked in. She's lying on the floor now. Hi, honey. Say hi to the stream. Yes. Oh. We're saying hi to the stream. It's not that nice of a nice, nice of a life. Just a guy. You don't. She she constantly complains she doesn't get fed enough. This cat wants to be obese more than any other animal I've ever met in my life. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, Gato. Liger 404. Thank you for the follow. 
All right, so let's see what users... Let's try that admin user first, obviously. So SM, uh, crack map exec can do pass the hash. So you, administrator, tack P, or it's tack capital H for hash. That's why you're there? Yeah, that's true. This is why I'm there, technically. Okay, put in the hash and we see, I don't imagine this is gonna work. Yeah, it doesn't, um, which is fine. That just means that the administrator's password was changed since that memory dump was taken. So we'll do SVC backup, which I'm sure is going to work for us just fine. Okay. Let's see if we can log in with SVC backup. And alas and alack, we can log in with as SVC backup. That's just... I get a real warm fuzzy from that chat. Uh, can we win our M? I wonder. Oh, I hit insert. God damn it. See if we have win our M access. <laughs> And there we go. So don't get too excited. This is usually what CrackMap Exec puts when you have when you have admin access. It always says it for WinRM access because usually only admins have access, but you can give non-admins WinRM access. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at what SVC backups permissions are. We can mark this as owned. And we can see what permissions we have. First degree group memberships. We see we're in remote management users, so we, that's why we can log in with WinRM. We're in backup operators. That's the cash money that's going to get us there, chat. That's going to do it for us. Uh, this right here, this backup operators group, that's going to do it for us right there. Um... I got to do this. I actually, I actually, actually did do this on a recent assessment. Um, and essentially all it takes is, uh, essentially, essentially, so what backup operators can do as you'd expect is they're allowed elevated permissions, uh, for backing, for operations, including backing up. So what we can essentially do is basically emulate backup software and backup. What file would we want to back up, chat? What file do you think we want to back up? Yeah, ntdsdit. ntds.dit. So ntds.dit is, uh, it contains information about the entire domain it's a file only found on the domain controller and uh it sits in the system file and the most pertinent thing it contains is information on every user and group in the entire domain including their hashed credentials so it's essentially uh, the ntds.dit file contains the credentials of all users on the domain so if you access ntds.dit um compromise of ntds.dit is essentially co uh, entire domain compromise it's, um, it is essentially complete domain compromise. Uh, can't we DC sync? No, I don't think we can DC sync. Um, because Bloodhound said we couldn't. We can still try. Uh, but I don't think that we can. Just being a member, I don't think being a member of the backup group gives us DC sync rights. We could try it. Uh, 
We can see if this password cracks, by the way. We can go over to Crack Station. Uh, we can see, we can check both of these passwords to see if they crack. Oh, God. I hate captures. Okay, uh, uh, SVC backup didn't crack. Let's check administrator, even though this isn't the current password. The users often, users often change their passwords in predictable sequences. Okay, so no, no joy there. Uh, so we do have to put the hashes. Um, it wants, it, a secret stump wants the landman hash, colon, NT hash. Uh, modern Windows systems do not store or use the landman hash. That's a super old and insecure method of hashing. So you can just put the same hash twice and it'll accept that. Uh, is it called Blackfield? Dot local slash SVC backup. Yeah, so we cannot connect to. Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't. We don't have the rights to DC sync. Uh, oh, just DC. We we forgot the just DC option. Yeah, so it doesn't work. Yeah, no uh, no secrets dump. That's okay. Uh, let's just win our M in. Is it underscore? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I needed lowercase u for the user. Yeah. Is it lowercase i? I thought it was uppercase i for evil winner I guess I'm wrong. It's uppercase h, though, for hash. There we go. So... We do not have an actual interactive prompt here, chat, but we do have um, code execution uh, in a PowerShell uh, in a PowerShell session. This is how uh, Windows uh, machines are managed remotely. So there's us so there's user.txt. Does anybody have any questions before I launch into the next piece? Nope. Okay. So now I've actually done this before on an actual assessment. So I know how to do this. Um, but I still need to look it up because it requires a script. You have to write a script to do it. Uh, so disk shadow. Um, a hunter must hunt. Get NTDS dot dit. Uh, backup operators exploit. Yeah, so what we're looking for is SE backup privilege. So if we do who am I slat who am I uh, slash priv That's what we want. We're exploiting hey, SE backup privilege. Is this a hard box? Um I'd say this is medium. Uh, this isn't so bad. It's very active directory. This is a very active directory focused machine. Island Hugger with the seven month of prime. Welcome back to the All Has Red team, my friend. Thanks for supporting the stream. Please make a video about Impacket and CrackMap Exec for your patrons. We'd be very interested. Yeah, that 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 yeah that could do. CrackMap Exec has a lot of uh, has a lot of options. But yeah, that's an interesting idea. I'll mark I'll mark that down, Medikin. Are you gonna play as a CTF player? No, I'm gonna be uh, this weekend. I'm gonna be reversing my sleep schedule, so I'm probably not gonna be getting a whole lot done. Um. I'm working on some content creation stuff, and that's about it. I, I have to reverse my sleep schedule for a week uh, to do a... Uh, we do not have SC impersonate. Don't need it. Don't need it. 
Um, okay, so I need this, probably, is what I want. Yep, backup operators, SC, excuse me, SC backup privilege. This is the way I've done it in the past. I don't know why they put these X's on the end. I don't think that's necessary, is it? I don't think that's necessary. I'm going to try and remove those. I, th I remember I've had some problems with the syntax of this. I think I'm just going to remove these X's. I don't think these are right. Okay. So basically, this is instructions to Windows built-in backup service. Um, it's telling it to back up the C drive and call it C drive. Uh, create the backup and then expose it via a mount on E. Evose it, expose it via the E drive, uh, drive letter. That's all it's doing. It's basically just creating a, uh, it's, it's creating a, uh, a backup and uh, upload Cthulhu.txt. Oh, come on. What, what, what directory was I in? Oh, I used it from the memory analysis. God damn it. I'll just do it again. There. Make a new session. Okay, we'll upload Cthulhu.txt. Okay. Okay, I didn't mean to click on that, but... Okay, so disk shadow. I think it's ta uh, slash s for script. Cthulhu.txt. Yeah, so the syntax is wrong. Uh, maybe it wanted those x's after all. Maybe it wanted those x's after all. I regret. Or just a space at the end, maybe. I don't know why it does this. I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, we had. I. I. I remember. I had problems last time I did this with this syntax, um, and I think it was this exact same thing. We just put spaces at the end here. Uh, so we'll upload Cthulhu.txt. Okay. Uh, we'll do the same thing over again. There it goes. So it's creating the backup now. It is creating the backup now. I don't know this attack. Yeah, this is a common... This is actually a common attack to see in the real world. You're compromised... This attack is possible if you compromise... God damn it. This attack is possible if you compromise an account that has the backup operators... That is in the backup operators group or otherwise has uh, SE backup privilege. Where's the privileges? Here, right here. SE backup privilege. Uh, basically, SE backup privileges uh, privilege allows you elevated rights specifically for doing backup operations. So we just write a script to back up the C drive and expose it uh, on drive letter E. Does that make sense? So now if we browse to the E drive, so now we're in the E drive. Now you'll notice this looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? That's because this is the this is a backup of the entire C drive. What the hell is notes.txt? We want that. Let's just get that. Now I can tell you what problem we're gonna have, chat. But what we really want is the CD into Windows um, CD system. Where is it, Loke? What what the fuck is it? And 
where is ntds.dit? I can never remember its actual location. Let me look. I think it's in config, actually. Is it Windows? No, it's System32. Config? I think it's in config. Yeah, here we go. Uh, ntds.dit is in a different folder, but I do need the SAM file. Uh, where is ntds.dit? See Windows NTDS. I know, I... Damn it. We do need... The thing is, we also need this file. Uh, let's do this. Um, PowerShell create zip. I'm just gonna create. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna compress the. Compress archive. E. Windows. System32. Config system. Destination path. C, Windows, RC users, SVC backup, documents, access to the path is denied. I should be able to read it. Can't I read it? Maybe they show us the way that they prefer to do it. Oh, we have to robocopy. I forgot we have to robocopy. Okay, my bad. I forgot the robocopy part. We don't actually have permissions to access it, so we have to use robocopy to access it. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll get the ntds.dit first. Robo copy slash B Windows NTDS NTDS dot dit. Okay. And there's our NTDS dot dit. This makes no sense. It yet yeah, does. Uh so we are allowed elevated permissions specifically, specifically to do backup operations, okay? Uh, so we're essentially creating a shadow copy. Yeah, OreoByte is saying it. We're creating what's called a shadow copy in Windows, a backup file system containing copies of all of the files in the file system. Um, we're also allowed limited opportunity to copy files out of it, uh, again, for backup operations. And we can do that with RoboCopy. Uh, we've copied the ntds.dit file out. Now, we want C Windows System32. We need the SAM file. Why do we need the SAM file, chat? Or the system file, excuse me. Uh, we could just do registry. We could just do reg save. We need that file. Does anyone know what this file is used for? Why do I need this file too? So the ntds.dit file is not just sitting on, on disk and clear text, it is encrypted. It's encrypted using a key called the boot key. The boot key is contained in the system file. So I need the system file to be able to decrypt ntds.dit. Um, let's go ahead and compress these.
We'll just compress the entire documents folder. Okay, so we're compressing. And here's backup.zip. Let's download backup.zip. The reason we're doing that is because these files are really big. And they're going to take a while to download. Compressing them both down into one file makes this go a lot faster. Oreo bite. I'm not dropping frames. I'm not dropping it. I've dropped zero frames since the stream started. I, I know you use two hey listens. Restart the stream, Oreo bite. I was trying to explain something is the thing. I was I it, it's hard to just stop in the middle of an explanation. I'm sorry about that, Oreo bite. It's fair enough. You did use two hey listens. I, I'm not dropping any frames. If you're having problems with the stream, um, it's probably on your end. Can you please talk about EJPT? I have not taken EJPT. Um, I know the course is free. Honestly, I should take the course. Just take a look at it. I'm told it's a good introduction into the into the industry. Um, and very reasonable because you can take the course for free and you only uh, pay to get the certification and take the exam. I'm not going to restart the stream, Jay-Z. We're just waiting. We're waiting to doubt. We're downloading our backup. Uh, how, how much time we have on Stream Raiders? Let's do Stream Raiders. Perfect timing. <laughs> Try just refreshing the stream, Oreo Byte. Uh, Dead Moro 2 off. Thank you for the follow. Frules, thank you for the follow. And Liger 404, thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to all of you. Your bits auto is bro auto is broken again. Is it? I don't see that you've donated any bits. I don't see that you've donated any bits, uh, Oreo Bite. Uh, con uh, Jay Z bringing Con Five Ti forgot this forgot his password. Welcome to the All Has Red Team, my friend. Thanks for supporting the stream. Sniper Labs, thank you for the follow. I want to learn exploit dev. I'll find the motivation next week. Um, yeah, that's always fun to look into. A little bit of memory exploitation. I, I don't I it can people don't not donate bits? That's a new one. People haven't been I don't think anyone donated any bits today. Teddington did 69 earlier. Like at the beginning of the stream, but he didn't do any text to speech. Alright, we're done. So let's exit. Unzip. Uh, backup.zip. Okay. So we now have the system and the SAM file. Where is it located, though? Oh, it's in documents. Okay, so now we do secrets dump. Let's see if I can remember the syntax for this. Uh, we need to just do local. Uh, secret dump can also do local stuff, uh, including dumping the ntds.dit. Uh, I think we could just put local. I think it's, uh, I think it's tech ntds. What are you dot dit. doing, step bro? Tech system. What? What, Televators and Matthias? What? 
Oh, Help! yeah, good call. Thank Help you. Him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You didn't miss anything. I just unzipped the zip file. My Help! bad. I'm sorry. I fixed it. Thank you. I'm sorry. And looky there. My goodness. And there's all the credentials, chat. In addition to my collection. I do see the fit deck redeem. We're going to do it. So, as you can see, we've dumped the ntds.dit, and this contains all the password hashes, including the administrator. Make sense? Does that, uh, I'll do a fit deck. Come up with questions. If you have questions, uh, I'm ready to answer. Let's go here. We'll do another one after this, by the way. Hopefully a short one. We'll pick a we'll pick a short one after this. I am the Lord of Hellfire. Uh, that one's boring. That one's also boring. Side crunches is good. We'll do side crunches. Why does it work now? Why does what work now? Like again, Oreo bite, I think whatever's happening is just on your end, my dude. I think that's just your end. Thank you for the 69 Tiggle Biddies, Teddington. And for the one Tiggle Biddy, so 70 Tiggle Biddies. Test but he for Aria bite. Chat now donating bits just to troll. Like, the, the text-to-speech isn't on for just one bit. Text-to-speech is only on for at least... I think I turned it for, like, at least 50 bits, I think. It might be 69. I might have made it 69. Alrighty. But it did work for a single bit? Oh, damn. That's weird. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People haven't been abusing it anyways, and now everyone's going to start abusing it. If people start abusing it, I'll fix it back again. I just don't want to fix it right now this second. Okay, so Jay-Z, thank you for the 100 Seagull biddies. At Alpha or ZR 3D, Mr. Oh. Streamer, what about this instead of a shadow copy at Alpha yeah. or ZR 3D? This is a shadow copy. the local admin system, Sam and Crack make Bexic with local auth. Yeah, you could have done that. Yeah, you certainly could have done that. There were multiple ways to accomplish this. And I think a couple of them are listed here. Disk shadow and DLLs. Uh, so you could have done... You could have used, I guess this is, oh, this is a GitHub repo that has some DLLs for you to use. Uh, this is a little bit sloppier because it requires you to upload uh, some executables to the machine, but not a big deal. So you could have done this too. There's a lot of ways you could have accomplished this. But yeah, you could have copied the system of the SAM file and, and, and authenticated with local auth. 
Any other questions? We're going to do another one after this. Don't be alarmed. We're not done. We're just going to get the... I'm just going to demonstrate that I can log in. Okay. And we can authenticate as the administrator account. So now we just do evil winrm. Oh god. I can already feel this. Hey, remember dubstep? You know that music that went wub 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 sitch 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 wub 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 sitch 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 sitch. I do remember that Husky Hacks, but thank you for the reminder. Passwords, use nominative domain account instead of this one. Backup and restore, because this audit report is sensitive. I have encrypted it on the desktop root.txt. Don't be encrypted. That's rude. Okay, it's not rude. Okay, it's there. So we got root.txt. Any questions about that box before we move on, chat? Thanks for the one tiggle, bitty Oreo bite, and thanks for the 100 husky. Wimax with the follow. Thank you so much. Any other any, any questions? Okay, we're going to close this down and we're going to pick a new one and hopefully it'll be a short one. So we'll probably pick an easy one. Do we want to maybe do do we want to do try hack me or proving grounds instead? Yeah, I got a little bit lucky with that one, chat, uh, cuz I just had to do that exact thing on a legitimate assessment, so I remembered how to do it. Um I imagine that would have taken me longer if I didn't know how to do that. An easy WordPress box? Well, if we can find a box with WordPress installed, let's see if TryHackMe has a WordPress box for you. Because people are requesting WordPress. Let me see. I, I don't have time for ROP exploitation, certainly, unfortunately. Do Ollie, it's medium level, on Hack the Box or try Hack Me? It's on try Hack Me? Let's take a look. I'm logging in. Hack the Box medium. Yeah, Hack the Box medium will probably take a little longer. Let's see. Practice. Let's do learn. Let's do search. Challenges. And let's search WordPress. Okay, so we got a few here. SQLi, WordPress, vhost enumeration, and recognizing internal services. That looks like it'll take a little while. Uh, WordPress CVE. Person who asked for WordPress, which one of these appeals to you the most? Probably this one, I guess. Do we want blog? Or all-in-one? All-in-one is an easy one. Let's just do all-in-one. Let's do all-in-one. Because this one is marked easy. It is Cthulhu Thursday, but I am on a time crunch. I've got about 45 minutes before I have to I have to be on a meeting. So this is going to be kind of a speed run. Kind of a speed run. A nice, e an easy one, hopefully, that I can knock out quickly. In before molding over XXE syntax or some shit. 
X, uh, for some reason, I can never get XXE syntax right. I swear to God, I have never been correct on my XXE syntax on the first try a single time. Uh, for some reason, XXE always gives me trouble. Okay. All right, so now we have to kill this and we have to connect to try hack me's vpn instead there we go does that keep you up at night dude all of my failures keep me up at night my continual my continuing and ongoing feelings of inadequacy as a pen tester and a red teamer in general do indeed keep me up at night every single time. What's the time at your place? Uh, it is 2.33 p.m. You can see on the Cali down at the bottom, my local time. I am in U.S. Mountain Time. What you have to understand about me, Chad, is that I'm tremendously competitive and I'm constantly comparing to myself to people. And... Uh, I specifically tell you guys that you shouldn't do that because I'm constantly doing it to myself and it's not a fun thing to do. All right, so it's nmap, tech sc, tech sv, tech on, nmap. It's not a healthy way to look at yourself. But it does keep you humble. I'll give you that. Is hacking on a Mac a bad idea? No, I have colleagues that use MacBook Pros. Uh, MacBook Pros are fine. Even, I would say, they're arguably better than Windows for some things. It's nice being in Bash instead of uh, PowerShell. PowerShell sucks ass. The syntax of PowerShell, I should say, sucks ass. Bash has great syntax for, like, just executing commands one at a time. Um, PowerShell's is much more verbose and irritating. Uh, I would say PowerShell syntax for scripts is easier, though. All right, so we do get some information... Uh, we do see this is likely Ubuntu. I think this is Ubuntu Xenial. It might be Bionic. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but we can check. We do see an FTP server open. Um, it does not say anonymous login. Oh, it does say. So, the t one of the things that TACSC checks for in Nmap is it ch if it finds an FTP server, it'll get this information about the FTP server, and it will check for anonymous login for us. So we do have FTP anonymous login. So let's make sure to uh, check that out. So anonymous login involves just setting the username anonymous and you can put anything as a password. It doesn't matter. We hit dir. Uh, do we get, can we do LS TAC A? Yeah. Okay. So there's just nothing in here. <laughs> Feels bad, man. They're going to cock block me like that. Uh, what else did we see? Did we see port 80? It did say WordPress, so yeah, we do see port 80 open. Let's start an all ports scan. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the page in the web browser. Okay, we get the default page, so we're going to want to go buster that. So I am going a little bit faster, chat, just because I want to make sure that we get through the entire box. Um, and I've got, I'm kind of on the, t I'm on a time crunch here a little bit. But if you do have questions, do ask and I'll ask as we, act, I'll, I'll answer as we go. The hidden storage expands slowly and it'll make you shoot your MacBook with a Mac 11. In fairness, I've never used a MacBook Pro for an extended period of time for penetration testing i did one. i did use one for about six months um it was fine it was fine i got used to it uh but you would have to spin up vms like anything else i used vms and docker containers keep in mind i use vms and docker containers on the job all the time constantly like v i i'm almost always in a vm or in a docker container uh we do see a wordpress uh endpoint here Take a look, see. 
help you practice several ways of exploiting a system. There are a few unintended paths to exploit the box and a few intended paths to get root access. A hunter must hunt. Do not just exploit it using intended. So they want me to do a number of different ways. I'll spend as much time as I can reasonably spend, but uh, obviously, I again, I am on a little bit of a time crunch. Holy sheep, man. Thank you so much for the first time indoctrination into the cult. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much. Chad B. Noob, thank you as well for bringing Wemax 07 into the cult. Welcome to the All Has Red team. Wemax, good to have you. Hackathons? I can't believe that's even in the word list. Damn how much I hate the smell of vinegar. So I noticed that vinegar is both italicized and uppercased. That looks like it's got to be a hint, right? Uh, I'm just making a new note page. Uh, all in one. So I'm just making a new note page. Does anyone know a good source to learn physical hardware hacking? Oh, boy. Um... I don't know one off the top of my head. I'm sure Google can help you with that better than I can. Nothing on the bottom of this page. Uh, you do... I should have seen it coming, okay? I should have seen it coming. Why are you the way that you are? I hate... I, I'm not a big fan of stupid stuff like this, like where I didn't scroll down. Yeah, sorry, the professional red teamer didn't see... Didn't think to scroll down in the... In the... Because this is not how things... Okay. It's not how things... At average OSCP holder. Shut up, chat. Shut the fuck up. No one cares. No one cares what you think, chat. You're Twitch. You are Twitch chat. Okay. So, we do have some spiciness occurring. Um, so, when you use WordPress, you're going to want to use WP Scan. WP Scan is incredibly powerful um, and useful for WordPress tests. Uh, you see WordPress quite a bit in the real world, so highly recommend checking WP Scan out. You can get a free API key and do like a vulnerability scan of WordPress. I'm not going to bother with that here because it's usually not necessary. But I do use it for work. Uh, tac tac URL. Uh, tac enumerate users and vulnerable plugins. Tac E is for enumeration options. We want to enumerate users and vulnerable plugins. So we'll see what we get here. Now look at your panice. L listen. My panice is plenty big, Teddington. Um, plenty big. Sure, we'll update. Who cares? Um, it's true. I've seen it. You've never even seen me in real life. Because you don't. You don't ever come to. You didn't come to FootCon. You know what? Pay my way and I'll go. Fair enough. The remote. Oh, fuck. I forgot to put WordPress. It helps to actually point WP scan at a WordPress instance. The upload directory has directory listing enabled. OK. 
Okay. Well, um, I'm going to... Okay, I'm just gonna make a simple file and I'm gonna try and see if we can put it up on the web server. Because I am curious if uh, this FTP, uh, if I can first of all upload to this anonymous FTP login. And if so, where is it being put? It's put for FTP. Could not create file. Okay, it looks like I cannot upload. Feels bad, man. Alrighty. Uh, what else did WP Scan say? So not a whole lot of plugins. We have an Eliana user. Okay, so let's go to WP Admin. Oh, it's WordPress slash WP Admin. God damn it, I can't type. Okay, uh, username uh, is Eliana. And we'll try some passwords. Uh, Vinegar? No? Uh, we can try that other wacky password looking thing. Nothing there. DVC maybe? Uh, maybe the login DVC. Nothing. So we can also try SSH. I keep moving my fucking tabs around. Okay, put in the password, which is this. It might be DVC or whatever. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, we can try uh, DVC. It might be with one uppercase character. Or this could just be, we might be feeling a little bit like Alice Chat. I feel I I feel like I feel a little bit like Alice. Uh, let's do WP scan. Uh, attack U for Eliana. Attack P. User share. Word lists. Durbust. Uh, word lists. Rock U dot text. And we'll see if that breaks the password. Did we see it? Did I miss anything else from the WordPress output? <laughs> Let's try enumerating all plugins. 
Uh, sometimes I find it helps to just enumerate all plugins and then check them for vulnerabilities individually. Shit. What was the IP address again? Uh, we don't need any of that. Uh, attack E, all plugins. Typically with WordPress, it's not WordPress itself that's going to be vulnerable unless you're attacking like a really out of date version of WordPress. What you're looking for is third party plugins that are, uh, that, are, that uh, tend to be inherently insecure. Uh, we d reflex gallery, mail master. So we did get some stuff. Uh, we did get. I've never heard of either of these plugins, but last updated 2014. Okay, probably insecure. Uh, let's search exploit that. Nothing. Uh, but we can try over here. I already like it, chat. So this is version 1.0, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the exact version, 1.0. We like this. Is our master? I'm watching chat. I see chat. Last updated 2014. Yeah, yeah. That's yikes. Allows an attacker to include a file, usually exploiting a dynamic file inclusion mechanisms implemented in tar black target application. The vulnerability occurs due to use of use of user supplied input without proper validation. So it's just a straight up include for a get and a get parameter. Wow. So just no sanitization. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I say, here's what you do. If you want CVEs on your resume, if you really think you really want to have a CVE or two to your name, you track down these third party WordPress plugins that are doing crazy ass shit. Like just include with the get parameter and people are just like, that's probably fine. Ship that code. No problems there whatsoever. Yep, no problem. Directly includes the input parameter. It is possible to include arbitrary files on the server. That's crazy to me. That's just nuts. Um, okay. Um, so is it WP content? Where is it located? Um, I think it's actually WP plugins. Not found. Am I wrong? Is it W? Is it WP content slash WP plugin? Does anybody remember before I start like freaking out? I think it's in WP content. WP plugins. No. Uh, is it WP content plugins? There we go. That's good. Okay, plugins. Mail Masta? No, it's got to be mail hyphen Masta. Progress. Excellent. Include. Uh, which files did it say were vulnerable? Count of send.php. Perfect. All right, so now we do. Uh, Was it ph? PL. PL equals Etsy past WD. That's just so fucking wacky, dude. So we do have a login here. We do have an Eliana user. Uh, Eliana is a valid user on the box. Uh, let's go view page source. And let's just copy and paste this into our notes. Easy box. Seems pretty easy so far, yeah. 
Let's see if we can access Eliana's, uh... Uh, SSH. SSH. ID RSA. Alas. Uh, so we can include the... WWW, HTML, WordPress, WP, config.php. Oh, I can't see it because it's a PHP file. I'm not going to be able to see it. I could send, I could try filter. Hmm. Yeah, we might want to try. Yeah, we might want to try the PHP filters. Um, let me check my notes. Um, attacks, web exploitation, PHP, and here is the filter. I'll explain what this is doing here in just a sec. If it works. I assume this is the web route. This is the default, so. Oh my god. This is why this is why you're here, chat. This is why you're here. So um so PHP has some uh has some little court has some little tricks you can use. Um, so when you include a parameter in PHP, uh, sometimes if it's, if it's a, if it is configured, uh, as such, you can add what's called a PHP filter. That means to modify the data that you're sending to it, that you're asking it to retrieve in some way. In this case, we're asking it to base 64 encode. The reason we can't include, why can't we include wp-config.php chat? I tried to include it. Why couldn't I include it? Yeah, because it's executing. It gets executed. Uh, I, I, it's raw. It's PHP code. It's getting executed. It doesn't help us very much. Uh, that doesn't help us very much. So, we we tell PHP, hey, retrieve this resource, but then base64 encode it. If it's base64 encoded, it won't execute. So this is all of the content of WP config. It's just been base64 encoded. So we can go to CyberChef. You need to get a workaround like using a filter in order to get code to execute. We don't want that code to execute in that case. And here's WP config. And we get Eliana's password, it looks like. A fine addition to my collection. That'll make a very fine addition to our collection chat. All right. Does anybody have any questions about any of that? Yeah, so if, if if we just pass it as a parameter, the, the PHP is getting executed. Uh, that's what include is supposed to do. Include statements are supposed to be include other PHP files, not text files. Um, ideally, that's, that's what they were designed for. In this case, we're including a PHP file, so it's getting executed. So we use filters to base64 encode it so it won't get executed. Uh, so we can see those uh, uh, credentials in there. Did this crack? It's still running, so clearly it did not crack. Uh, so let's check to see if we can log in as Eliana here, chat. Uh, we can check SSH and we can check um, WordPress. Eliana and the password. Hack me one, two, three. A very strong password. Feel 
Email correct, sure. So yeah, the PHP filters are a cute little thing you can do. Um, you can Google around and find plenty of information on that, but I'll post the one that I used in chat just so you can see. Again, all it's doing is base64 encoding the content of wpconfig.php so that it is not executed. And we see that we can, uh, we can change the appearance. We have admin rights here. So we can go into theme editor. If it ever loads. For some reason, WordPress always takes fucking forever to load the admin console. I understand. Uh, let's go into the 404 template. That's usually where I like to put my executable code. And we can put it here. There we are. File edited, good. So we can come. So now we just need to trigger that. We just need to access a, a page that doesn't exist. The easiest way to do that uh, is maybe to click on this post and then we just change one of these parameters in the URL. And looky there. So this is the 404 template, and we can see that our code is executing because we have Cthulhu Photogon in the corner now. Have you considered doing one-on-one -on -one coaching? I have before. You can reach out to me on my, uh, reach out to me on my uh, email uh, or on Discord. Yeah, I have done one-on-one -on -one coaching before. Have a good night, Fubanizer. We should probably, isn't it get? You, if you use request, you can act, you can send the parameter in either get or a post request, which I'm about to show you. This scenario realistic? Yeah. WordPress is pretty common. Uh, WordPress plugins are notoriously insecure. Um, uh, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Usually, if you compromise WordPress, it's going to be one of two ways. Either a WordPress plugin that had a vulnerability and was insecure, or two, um, a user had a weak password. WordPress is notorious for being able you can, for you to be able to uh, um, brute force users uh, to find usernames um, just because of how WordPress is laid out as a CMS. So you can find usernames and then try and brute force or password spray them. I would say that's the most common way in the real world that I get in. Password spraying WordPress. If you can break into an admin account, it's trivial to get code execution from there. Send to repeater. So if we include a get a parameter here cmd equals id send that uh we got all this cms uh the css stuff it'd be easier to see on the actual page let me just time look for a photogen there we go see So we can execute, or because because when I put the code in, I use dollar underscore request instead of get. You can change. You can use either a get or a post request for this. So you can change progress method and send it as a post request, and it'll still work. And this, and this helps because post requests have less restrictions uh, as far as length, bad characters, and so on. Uh, so this just makes it easier to get a reverse shell. Uh, let You have less obstacles in your way. Why is this? I swear to God I changed this. Dark. 
Okay, what's my IP address? 10.2.54.81. Okay, we go back over here. We paste this in. I like to change this to slash bin slash bash just in case. Just put the full path there. Can you control U to URL encode it because that's the content type we're sending. Netcat Tech NLVP 8443. We send. And we did not get a shell. Okay. Did I mess something up? Ten dot two dot fifty four dot eighty one. Yep. Well, it could be for what uh there could be any number of reasons why that's not working. Let's try a netcat one. I added a note in Windows Defender fuck my notes up. Yeah, that'll do that. Yeah. It'll do that. And yet I still get people contacting me on Patreon asking me uh, suspiciously like why Windows Defender is flagging my notes. I'm like they can't figure out that there's probably malicious strings in my uh in my in my red team notes. There we go. Hacker man. I'm in. All right. So Who am I? We're dub 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 data. I just remember you speaking of it last time. It particularly hates the PowerShell markdown file. Particularly hates that one. Any workaround? Uh, I whitelisted. I've added an exclusion in Windows Defender for all markdown files, and that seemed to solve it. And just to be safe, I added exclusions for the actual vault directory as well. Uh, which Python 3? Python 3-C, 3 import PTY... Bty.spawn bin bash Okay, control Z STTY raw minus echo export term equals X term two fifty six color STTY dash A Rows 37, columns 109, or 129. STTY rows 37, calls 129. And there we go. So we have a proper TTY. Another thing we can try is to just sue Eliana from here. And see if we can see if her password is the same. Nope. We could try to SSH in. I can't imagine it's gonna work though. I keep forgetting the IP address. 1010-124-175. It does appear that Eliana uses a different password. Okay. Okay. Can look at this. So normally at this point we'd want to check the wp-config.php, but we already have that. Uh, when will the interview from Nahomsec be available? Uh, I wasn't recording it. I'd have to get it from him. Uh, I'll ask him if he can pass me the recording. Uh, I'll ask Nahomsec if, uh, uh, if he can pass me the recording. I wasn't able to record it, uh, because I didn't have access to his stream. Like, it could, it would have recorded my stuff, but not his stuff. Um, so I'll ask for him to get it, because he makes it a sub-only sub-only thing, so I'll ask him if he'll provide it for my viewers. Uh, alright, so let's check slash opt right away, because that's apparently, that's where the passwords are. 
Nope. Uh, are we in a Docker container or anything crazy? Nope. Uh, let's check home. CD Eliana. Uh, there's a hint.txt that we can read. User.txt is not readable by us, but hint.txt is. And we see sudo as admin successful for Eliana, so we expect that she does have sudo permissions. Eliana's user password is hidden in the system. Find it. Um, probably there. Oh, I can't read it. Damn it. Uh, bash history has actual content in it, so that's at really, really juicy. Okay, hidden on the system. Okay, um, find root tech user Eliana. Tech T file. Maybe not the tech T. I want to find all files that are owned by Eliana. Have a good night, John Astruck. Thanks for being here. A little bit of a sporting choice as far as a um, little bit of a sporting choice is uh, I, I, a little bit off the cuff as far as I decided to stream earlier today. Is it ty tac type F? Okay, not tac T then. Good to know. I'm looking for all files that are owned by Eliana. Is the book handbook for Red Team any good for CTF? Um, probably not. Red Team Red Team stuff is distinctly different from CTFs, uh, from the usual CTF. Red Team is just a different skill set. Why is this taking so long? There we go. Let's see if we. Uh, I think we saw all these. These are all just in the home directory. So let's see what else we get. What box is this? This is all in one on Try Hack Me, which I forgot to change. The challenge, as I always do. Try hack me all in one. It's going. It's just taking a while. Okay. Private.txt. That looks pretty good. Let's just check that out. Okay. Well... A little silly, um, but not te not 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 too bad. A fine addition to my collection. Easy, easy right, I guess is the password. Okay, so we can sue Eliana. Password easy right or whatever it is. Who am I? Am I am I Eliana now? I am Eliana now. Okay. So my prompt didn't change, but I am Eliana now. Uh, cat user .txt. Uh, that looks like base 64. And it is base 64. Cute trick. Okay, so there's our first, there's our first one. Uh, we can choose sudo tech L. Uh, we can run socat uh, as root. So let's head on over to our good friend GTFO bins. We can also less uh, dot bash underscore history because we can read it now. And this is valuable because um this is you, you usually don't see this you usually don't see this in ctfs because usually box creators account for it uh but in this case it looks like the he didn't deal with uh history so we can see him setting up the box oh no this is just me i think nope this is not me 
Yeah, this is just the user setting up the box. He put he created the hint.txt. He did something with SoCat. Change mod 6755 bin bash. Pseudo nano Etsy cron tab. It looks like there is. So he modified the cron tab. So there's probably a cron there's probably a cron job running as well we can find for Privesk. See, it kind of ruins the whole Privesk. It kind of it kind of ruins the whole thing if you don't remove bash history. So if I can literally see you setting up the box. Like if you're going to make a box, get rid of the bash history, okay? It's not hard. Uh let's do stream raiders really quick. I mean, it's realistic this way. People generally People in the re in, in the real world generally don't like delete their bash history or pipe it to dev null, but so it's realistic, um, but it's not necessarily um, I don't know it's not as sporting for a CTF I guess. Uh, Jihad uh, Jihad and B and BS thank you for the follow Cthulhu Fatten to you my friend. Don't look in through the history. Yeah I, I mean I guess I. I am looking through the history, and I'm seeing some other stuff that I didn't even see before. Yeah, it looks like there's a cron job running. Yeah, there's definitely a cron job uh, running from var backups. There's a backup script running from var backups uh, that looks like it's in the cron. In the cron. So, uh, there's a number of ways to privask, it looks like. Is this a Tluck? Uh, you could say it's a Tluck, a T-L-U-C. Um, for legal reasons, we're not allowed to call it what it actually, what, I'm sorry, did I say actually is? For legal reasons, we're not allowed to call it some other things. Uh, so let's try GTFO bins with SoCat first. And it looks like Burp is capturing. SoCat. Uh, sudo. If the binary is allowed to run a super user, it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system. We'll we'll look at these other methods of privesk as well. Who am I? We are root. We're not done. I'm gonna look at the other methods of privesk as well. I got time. Okay. Oh, you can't see. Fuck. Oh, damn it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do it again. Hang on. I'll do it again. I'm sorry. I fucked up. Let's go back. Okay, so this is the command that I ran. GTFO bins gave me this. I just copied it out of here. Put it in. Who am I? We are a root. Make sense? If we go over here, we put that in and we get the confetti. Okay? We'll look at a few other ways of privesking. So based on the bash history, I can see that there's probably multiple cron jobs running. There's one in var backups. Script.sh. We see that this script is owned by root and is uh, 777 permissions. Just a test script might use it later for a cron task. Okay, well, I'm going to use nano to modify it now. So you could put any commands in here. I'm just going to use it to run a reverse shell for simplicity's sake. Uh, the netcat one worked before, so we'll use that one again. Okay, so we'll sit here and wait to see if we get any... Uh, get a shell that comes in. 
We can also use Peace Buy. Oh my god, I'm still getting used to these key bindings. Okay, so we can st we can also use key Peace Buy here. Uh, let's go ahead and do that while we're waiting. Do I have Peace Buy downloaded? I do not. So I need Peace Buy. Peace Buy allows an unauthenticated user to monitor Linux processes as they start, including root processes. So this is the easiest way to see uh, cron jobs running that are running in roots cron tab. You can also probably cat Etsy cron tab. Um, but it's in roots. Uh, if stuff's in roots cron tab, we're not going to be able to see it. Like there's just nothing in here. Um, so if it's in roots cron tab, we will need peace by to see it. Oh, uh, we got root, though. See? We're root. Make sense? So that was through the script. The way I found that script was through the bash history. But we can see what other things are running. denied okay we're downloading chamod plus x piece by okay so we will we will see processes as they start Okay, it's taking a little longer to start up than it usually does, but this whole box has been slow, so we'll give it a sec. We did check, we already checked the cron tab, but we can't see the root cron tab. If something's in the root cron tab, we're not gonna be able to see it. And for some reason, Peace Buy appears to be failing. That is odd. Oh well. You know how to do it now. The, the, the box just seems to be really slow. Also, maybe there was an error downloading. Whatever. Uh, Eliana at 1010-124-175. We'll SSH in and get a proper shell. Have you seen everything all at once? I've heard good things. Dude, that movie fucking rocked. Yes, I did see it. Um, I highly recommend it. I think it's Oscar worthy. It's really, really good. It's like a science fiction martial arts movie. It almost has Matrix vibes. Except it's it's more lighthearted than The Matrix. The Matrix is relentlessly dark. Um, but this is more of a comedy, almost. Uh, I also saw something else in the bash history. Uh, I saw this. The LXD group. So, if you're in the LXD group, you can run LXD commands. See if we have any LXC images. How much time have I got? Ooh. I'm cutting it close. Come on, LXC. This box is super slow. 
I'm going tomorrow morning. I hope I'm the only one in the theater so I can shout at the screen. Again, it's very good. Uh, you'll you'll have a great time, I promise you. It looks like there is an image. Uh, hack tricks, LXC privilege escalation. So LXC, LXC is a containerization software similar to Docker. In fact, I think Docker is actually a wrapper around LXC. Uh, LXC is a little bit lower level. Um, but it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable for the same reasons uh, as if you're. Vul it's vulnerable if you are if a user's in the Docker group. Okay, we create. There is a container. Can I just put the fingerprint instead of the alias? Because it looks like there is no alias. Otherwise, I would have to upload my own thing to the box. Not found. Um, I don't know why there's no alias or anything. You can run LXC with bin bash with LXC? Inside containers, you can. Thank you for being here, Teddington. I appreciate it. Yeah, so LXC is not in GTFO bins. We would need to do this privesque. And the problem is, I've had problems compiling or creating the image. alias LXC list famous pigeon it's actually running I just execute a command inside of that container I'd rather start up a new container I'm not as familiar with LXC as I am docker oh, we'll do this oh, it's probably not it doesn't it probably doesn't have the Add see if I can do this. Okay. LXC exec famous pigeon Ben SH. Okay, so we're inside of the container here. We can look at mount root. And there we go. So that, that was the privesque. We didn't follow the whole thing here. Um, you have to do this stuff if there are no containers running. In this case, there was already a container running. So we just added, and it, and it fortunately had this security privileged equals true. I don't know if this is necessary for what we wanted to do. But... Um, 
we we just had to add a volume to LXC. Um, basically, we mounted the root the root directory on the host into to the mount root path inside of the container. That's it. So we have. So we can read root. Does any does that does that make any question? Is that so? There we go. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I do need to. I do need to go. I have to. I have to hop on a call here in just like in two in literally two minutes. Um. So, uh, if you have a quick question, I'm just gonna look for someone to raid really quick. Kitbog is doing a uh, uh, rerun. Oh, Bash Bunny is streaming, but she's streaming Apex Legends. What headphones are these? These are uh, Steel Series 7, I think. Oh, you know what? Gar raids me all the fucking time, dude. I'm going to raid Gar today. Today, we counter raid Gar, my friend. He's doing some easy boxes on Trihack Me. Bring him glad tidings of Dread Cthulhu. Thank you guys for being here um, in such great numbers, even though I streamed a little earlier today. Um, I really do appreciate it. It's the light of my life being here doing this for you guys. If you do have questions, comments, threats, requests, bribes, feedback, anything you got, I'm always available on Discord and Twitter. Um, I think someone mentioned wanting one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. Uh, I, I have done that in the past. Just reach out to me on Discord or by email and we can work it out. Um, go to bed tonight knowing a little bit more than you did yesterday. I'll see you guys again when the stars are right. Have a good night, day, or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Get vaccinated. Stay safe. Love you all.